Hey guys, I am the math professor Kyle Martin. In today's video, we're talking all about the substitution property of equality and how you can use it to help complete all the proofs you're given for your assignments in geometry. All right, we're gonna give you a quick definition of it, give you some examples, as well as three real proofs, all that use the substitution property um, to help complete those. Reminder, this is part of my proof reasons playlist. Okay, so if you need some other reasons besides the substitution property, maybe click up here. I'll have that playlist link for you. Right now, let's get into it. Hey guys, I forgot to mention down in the video player below are timestamps, so you can skip to whichever parts you need. If you just need the proof, if you just need an example, go ahead and click whatever parts you need. Otherwise, the definition I'm gonna use for the substitution property is this. It's whenever you are mathematically allowed to replace one value, measure, segment, ray, angle, whatever, all right, for another. So what do I mean by that? Check it out. Okay, here's a really good example of substitution because here we are given that the measure of angle C equals 40. Maybe in this line by angle addition or something, we have that 30 plus measure of angle C equals measure of angle B. All right, then you have 30 plus 40 equals measure of angle B. And then down here, you know that this next one's gonna be combining like terms because 30 plus 40 is 70. But how did I get the second line? Well, what they did is they replaced a measure of angle C right with 40 like they were giving us in our given okay so since you can replace that remember that was in our definition when you replace something that has the same value that is substitution okay guys another really common idea with substitution is they take an angle and or maybe a segment and they take another angle or segment that has the same value and they replace it with that one okay so in this example that's going to happen so we have wxy that's angle one here equals the measure of angle yxz which is angle two okay and i don't know maybe this is just a portion of a proof but it tells me that's because of the definition of an angle bisector all right Great. Um, then it says WXY, again, angle one, plus the measure of angle YXZ, angle two, equals measure of angle WXZ, the entire thing. Okay, that's just the angle addition postulate. By the way, I have a video on that if you need it. Okay, but then this is where the tricky part gets because now this line, line three and line two, look almost identical, but if you look close, there's a very key difference. Okay, the first angle is the same, but the second angle, this is XYZ, angle two, but this one says plus WXY again. That's what we just had, WXY. So I can take it plus itself and equal the same thing, WXZ, the whole angle. And the way this works now is because of substitution, because I know in line one that those two angles are the same, they equal each other. All right, so because um, X or W, what is this, YXZ, YXZ equals WXY, I can replace YXZ with WXY in this last line, and therefore that was by substitution. All right, let's try some real proofs now. All right, guys, our first proof says given AB equals CD and BE equals ED, uh, we need to prove that AE equals ED. All right, so our first two parts are given to us. Those are both in our given statement. And then we have AB plus BE equals CD plus EC. So to get there, they just took the AB and CD and they added the same thing, right? These two equal each other. So they just added on to both sides. This can be our addition property of equality. And then down here, we have EC. If you look at our picture up here, EC plus CD, and together that equals ED. That's just segment addition, right? Remember my video? Segment addition. And same thing, AB plus BC equals AE. Again, segment addition, right? AB, BE equals AE. And then lastly, we're already to our proof statement, right? AE equals ED. How did I get there? So this is a tricky one because we have to look back and I always tell my students, look to see where these two things happened before in your statement's reasons, okay? So we have AE, that's right here. So that's gonna be um, equal to, then what, what does that equal? It equals, I'll put a box around it, AB plus BE, okay? And then my other one, ED, well that occurs right here. I'll circle that one, that equals EC plus CD. So if I can find a spot where the, where the box equals the circle, then I'll know that these are the same by substitution. Okay, so I need to find that. And of course, in line three, that happens, right? E, C, C, D, E, C, and C, D. Put a circle around it. And then also A, B, and B, E. Well, yeah, A, B, and B, E. Those two things equal each other up in line three. So because they equal each other up there, I replace them with what they equal in lines four and five, E, D, and A, E. AE and ED, 
And so by substitution, we were able to make that switch. Proof two. All right, proof two tells us that ray OC bisects angle AOB and the measure of angle AOC, the top one, uh, is 70 degrees, okay? So let's just go through this piece by piece. Let's see what happens. It says OC bisects angle AOB. That was given to us. It also says that the measure of angle AOC is 70 degrees, also given to us. All right, then uh, line three says that the measure of angle AOC, the top one, plus the measure of angle COB, the bottom one, equals the measure of angle AOB, the entire thing. The parts plus the part equals the whole. That is angle addition. All right, line four says the measure of angle AOC equals the measure of angle COB. Well, if we look back to what was given to us, I think that might be the definition of an angle bisector from our first given. Okay, line five says the measure of angle AOC plus the measure of angle AOC again equals measure of angle AOB. So I'm looking at back to line three. Line three and line five are almost the same, except instead of the measure of angle COB, I now have AOC again. So what I need to figure out is how can I replace AOC with COB or COB with AOC? And that's from my line four, which tells me those two things are equal. So because they're equal and I replaced it, that is gonna be substitution. Okay, and then line six, 70 degrees plus 70 degrees equals the measure of angle AOB. Again, lines five and six are almost identical, except we replaced both of our AOCs with 70 degrees, which I know I got from line two. So again, I'm replacing that with something that already occurred in my proof. Again, substitution. Okay, and then the last couple here, instead of 70 and 70, I now have 140. We just added those together or we combined our like terms. And then lastly, I flip-flopped the 140 in the measure of angle AOB. When they switch spots, that is called a symmetric property. All right, proof three. All right, guys, proof three says that GF equals HJ. We need to prove that GH equals FJ. All right, so we have our picture over here with our four points on our segments. And the first one's always given to us, okay? So then our second one is actually a little bit tricky. Let's look at what we have here. We have GF, okay, GF came from our first line. And then over here we had an HJ, HJ is down here. So I actually added FH to both. So this is actually just addition. When I do it to both sides of the equal sign, that's addition. Okay, addition property of equality. And then number three says now GF plus FH equals GH. Well, it kind of looks like my line above, but I don't have any other GHs. So let me look at my picture. Let's see here. GF, that's this first one, plus FH, the second one. Well, if that equals GH, that's just gonna be segment addition, right? The part plus the part equals the whole is segment addition. Okay, and then I bet the next one's gonna be very similar, FH. Yep, the middle plus HJ, part plus part equals FJ. Again, part plus part is the whole, segment addition again. Okay, and then line five says GH equals HJ plus FH. All right, so here's where we have to probably think for the first time. Uh, it says GH, well, let's see. I have a GH up here and I have HJ plus FH. Well, up here, it looks like I have an FH, that's the same as line three, but my HJ used to be a GF. In my given, it says those two things are equal to each other. So since I can replace this HJ, or this, uh, excuse me, this GF with HJ and now get line five to look like line three, that is gonna be where substitution comes in. All right, and then lastly, line six says GH equals FJ. So if, let me erase some of these lines. <clears throat> All right, where did we get these from? Well, let me do some underlining now. I see here's a GH and back before, the last place I see it in my statements is right here. Again, kind of like I did in one of the other proofs, I'm gonna put a box around what that equals. It's HJ plus FH. All right, HJ plus FH. Does that happen anywhere else? Yeah, right here, HJ and FH. Okay, so then I need to say, where does FJ occur? Well, FJ also equals what that box equals, right? 
In fact, I'll do a double underline for that one. So since both those boxes equal the same thing, GH and FJ, I can say by substitution again, that those two equal each other. All right, so in each of those three proofs, we replaced maybe a segment or maybe an angle with something that was the same value, all right? In, in this case, right, it, you have to add a couple things together to get that value. But in each case, we replaced it. That's gonna be the key to substitution. All right, guys, I hope this video on the substitution property helped you out. If it did, let me know in a comment, all right? If it didn't, let me know in a comment, all right? And then, do you like free stuff? So do I, all right? You know what's free for you? If you like, if you subscribe, doesn't cost you anything. Do it.